Great news everyone, um, I'm here to talk to you about your level 3 digital media course and today we're looking at Unit 2, LO2. Now for my post students, the last time that I saw you in class we were looking to start of LO1. I'm not going to be continuing it today, I'm going to move on to LO2 and I'm also going to be making a lot of use of this uh, online dynamic learning textbook that we have access to. You may have the uh, printed version which is equally the same, it's the same content um, so I'm on Unit 2 LO2. I will be copying all of the important stuff out of this though and putting it um, in your Teams and in Show My Homework and also in the YouTube section as well so that way you can read some of this if needed okay. So LO2 is all about interpreting a client brief. Unit 2 itself is an exam based unit but uh, for the exam work, other than that, all of this stuff is covered in your coursework. So in your coursework you are going to be creating media products, um, could be a magazine, it could be a video, it could be a radio show of some sort, um, and you're going to need to use the work that you've done in LO2 to help you to make that the best you possibly can. Okay, um, so what I would like you to do for this week is to read the 2.1 section here, evaluating client requirements and target audience considerations. I'm not going to go too much onto this one because I've got an example that I'm going to go straight into. Okay, so we've got here about the different sorts of client briefs that you may be being given at any point and the different tools that you can use. Some of these tools are going to be very familiar to you if you studied this at GCSE level in any way. Mind maps, mood boards are definitely covered in the GCSE spec and you may already know them from other lessons. Blue sky thinking and SWOT analysis may be new to you and if that's the case I strongly advise you to, to read about those um, in the textbook. Uh, there are some examples but also to use the internet to find out how those are covered. When we're looking at client requirements there are four different things that we need to think about. Which requirements are implicit, so they're not really said in the brief but we can infer that that's what they want. They're open, there means that they we have complete freedom to do whatever we want as long as we can justify it. There might be constraints there might be certain things that we can or can't include in it depending on an outside agency. So I'm very much here, you've got the legal and ethical issues here about our products. Or explicit. Now explicit is where the client has said it must have this. Okay, there is no sort of buts on that one. You must make sure that's on there. So our activity today is this one here where we're going to be talking about a company called Welsh Mocker. Welsh Market is a coffee chain operating in five cities in South Wales. Now I know this because it says so right here at the top where it says client and because it says it straight away one of the things I'm definitely going to be doing is creating some notes on the side and making sure that I include the important deals at the top there. It's because whenever I'm making a product I want to make sure that it's always on brand, that we're always making sure that we're hitting those requirements. So I've got Welsh Mocker, it's a coffee shop. It's in Wales and they basically need a new logo. So they're going to create a new uh, funky fresh new look as it says in the brief uh, so they can rise above their competitors. So they've got to have competitors in the area. Now those competitors could be um, independents, uh, it could be the big multinational brands, it could be other convenience food sellers of some sort. So that logo needs to stand out from them and when we're thinking about that um, a lot of you are going to have some really good experiences already. You can probably right now draw me a logo of a brand, any brand. Some of you may have gone for the Nike tick, some of you may have gone for McDonald's arches. These brands step out and most people can probably draw their logo straight away. They've got very similar themes, they're simple, they're easy to picture in your head, you probably already know what the colours are likely to be. Some competitors are obviously going to have <coughs> much more complicated logos and that's perfectly fine but we need to read more on this to see what sort of logo this company wants. 
So their target audience is males and females, aged from late teens to 40s, quite a wide range. High disposable income with an interest in relaxing your friends and reading and drinking coffee. Great. So it's a, a very large group in age but disposable income is going to move us into the uh, the top brands your your abc groups of social economic groups uh an interest in relaxing with friends note that this doesn't say fast food takeaway although there's probably going to be some element to this shop that does serve that it i can almost imagine that the company itself is going to have lots of uh sofas in its restaurants coffee shops uh they're going to have uh, armchairs books it's the sort of place that's going to have free wi-fi encourage you to sit there with your laptop have a few drinks um so i can see from this and that is not mentioned in the brief that is inferred okay so i've got an implicit idea that that's kind of what they want their their company to look like so the graphic image is going to be on a t-shirt it's going to be worn by staff and used as company uniform so i you know need to have something that's going to be front and center in front of everybody because it's on company uniform could it be the whole t-shirt potentially uh, i would probably say that would be weird but it's it's not unheard of uh, and you may want to think about what that might look like um so the contemporary look would help create a colorful and positive upbeat chain so we want it nice and light and friendly and uh easy for people to understand so the context is that all employees of me will be wearing it it's going to give us a freebie in the hope that um people will see it and have exposure in the local area um the logos we use on business cards displays there's all sorts of considerations down here as well most of these considerations would be really definitely explicit you know we want it to make sure it has these things here uh, number one for instance t-shirt color is black so if you make your logo black then you can't see the logo on a black t-shirt so and it's very explicit there it's going to need to be some other color okay i'm not going to go through all of these here because what i want to do is talk about your activities you're going to do two things here one and two okay so a mind map of possible solutions to the brief well as soon as i'm doing that i'm going to be putting welsh marker in my middle and i'm going to start thinking about some of the ideas that i get whenever i whenever i come with think about this so i'm actually going to base my um my two ideas i think i'm going to start with the two words so i'm going to either focus either on the welsh section of its name or its marker section you want to think about what each of those thinks about and they're going to equally see it as any sort of combination between the pair of them so it's thinking of wales then of course there may well be things that are typically welsh okay um this may require some research if you're not familiar with that great country um but if not then right that's some of the things first thing i thought of as soon as i saw welsh was um dragon if you don't know why google its flag okay uh, there would also be for certain colors that would definitely appeal so um definitely gonna think of some reds some whites some green i believe Um, I might start thinking of um, sort of the maps. I might think of landmarks. I nearly made a mistake that I was about to say mountains. I was going to say Mount uh, sort of Snowdonia and all that sort of stuff. But um, I've remembered that these are five cities in southern Wales. That's not definitely not going to happen there. I wouldn't be happy if I did that. I'll leave that be for the moment. So mocha, what have I got here? Well, mocha is a is a sort of a flavor of coffee so it's going to be a, a mocha is a is chalk and coffee as soon as i see that then i'm definitely starting to think about the sort of color schemes that, that fit with that there's definitely sort of brown for the coffee there might well be sort of elements of milk and all that sort of stuff in that as well but also what do i think about when i think about mocha as well perhaps i've started to think about all oh, our mockers tend to be hot perhaps you know, they're hot drinks. What do I think of when I think of that? Well, I'm, even now I'm starting to get some ideas of 
just you know is it going to be something like that where i'm going to have a coffee cup perhaps is that on brand is that a mocha thing um is there any way that i can link these two together well maybe but that's kind of your job i'm not going to do any more about that but what i would definitely do from here is i would start to try and pull out from your mind map two ideas now what i don't want you to do today is to make graphics and logos but that's not today's task okay this isn't a production unit although if that helps you to achieve this then make some drafts okay but maybe i might have uh idea one and idea two and for this one here it's going to be based on a coffee cup um i don't know maybe the coffee cup's going to be in the shape of Wales or something like that. I don't know, with a handle. That is absolutely awful drawing. Okay, maybe my other idea is going to be based on a dragon of some sort. Do you want to see the world's worst dragon? There we go. Does it have four? Is it that wyvern? I can't remember. Skyrim fans, tell me the difference between a dragon and a wyvern, please. Leave your comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe. So there's my dragon, and for some reason it's going to have a logo there with some colours in it, and he's going to refire on a coffee and keep warm. Those are my ideas. I'm going to talk a little bit about each one of those. After that, I'm ready to do my second task, carrying out a SWOT analysis. So the SWOT analysis is going to enable me to to decide really what's the most important. Oh, I just can't see. You can't see my dragon. There it is. Um, a SWOT analysis is going to help me to work out which one of those is a better idea. Okay. Well. Let's go back to my next whiteboard and take a look at SWOT analysis. So a SWOT analysis is where you look at a product or a brand or an organization of some sort um, and you talk about four things. You talk about the strengths, the weaknesses, the opportunities and the threats. OK, so the strengths are all the things that you think of. Well, this is strong. This is the sort of thing where we are good at this and most of the strengths and weaknesses that you'll see will be um, internal internal ideas so we are obviously welsh mocker it's a really strong name you've got two really really key words there that sum up ideas there's no one going into a mocker shop who doesn't understand that they're going to sell mockers perhaps Unless, of course, the weakness is that mocha is not as a common word as, say, coffee. Would Welsh coffee stand up better, or is that too not? When we talk about strengths and weaknesses, it's up to you to interpret these. Is this a good thing for our company? Okay. You may also then start to look at the opportunities and threats. The opportunities and threats tend to be external. So what other things out there that might sort of hinder our development in some way? Well, you're definitely going to see, uh, let's just switch on to this one. Oh, no, I've got it on there. Is it on there? Oh, no, it's on there. Um, there we go. So the opportunities and threats that you will see on this one here. Well, we've got threats. We've got external companies recognizable brands that already exist that we're going to have to try and beat in some way um i would suggest that the starbucks logo which is incredibly difficult to draw which i'm not going to bother doing but is instantly recognizable by many many people it's actually probably a good example of a, a really complex logo but you still kind of get an idea of what it roughly is it's worth googling to see the details but it's a threat and if someone walking down the high street sees starbucks um, as a, a logo they know exactly what it sells okay so how are we going to make sure that someone's seeing a t-shirt that has welsh mocker on it they're going to know exactly the same there's a, definitely an opportunity because we don't have history as a company uh, we're brand new this logo is a new idea then there is an opportunity for us to create a whole new identity and or looking at the sort of the trends and fashions that appeal now is there an opportunity to make our t-shirt appeal to a young audience is there an opportunity to try and make ourselves viral in some way or have some sort of meme aspect to it perhaps um, is there an opportunity for us to 
differentiate us at what, the way that we do things by having a mascot, an icon, a color that that, that just screams us. Um, you know, are we going to be unique? If I have a pure green logo, just like Starbucks does, then maybe I'm not being unique. I would like you to create create the SWOT analysis for Welsh Mocha. Once you've talked about the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats of that particular brand, what I would like you to then think about is um, wherever it's gone, which one of your two ideas is the most appropriate. For my students, I want this work submitted as an assignment on Microsoft Teams. Okay, for anyone else out on the internet who's following this, I would like you to submit that how your teacher has asked you to do that. Thank you very much, and I'll see you soon.